Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to do a beam example. Firstly I'm going to solve the example using the normal method and then show you how to simplify the solution by using the symmetry technique. Okay, the Excel sheet I have opened here is the template I derived in one of my previous videos where I just input the um, section parameters and as well as the element length that will be needed. Meters. and then it auto calculates the element matrix for me and yeah this is just a sketch up here to show you where the forces are what the positive sign conventions are and as well as which displacement is associated with which force and this is a problem I'm going to solve for you or what we are going to solve as you can see we have two elements from node 1 to 2 and the other from node 2 to 3 both are 4 meters in length we have a pin support in node 1 and a roller support in node 3 and also we have a spring in the middle here and the section properties are given there so yeah let's get started so firstly we need to enter our section properties which is the Young modulus which is 70 10 to the power of 9 pascals and my Inertia 2 e minus 4, not 7. And my length will be 4 meters. And now my element matrix for the element has been calculated. So I'm just going to write that down. So I'm going to write k element 1 equal 2. And I always number or label my matrix so I know which displacements are associated with which values and the way this magic is set up as in my derivation video is the vertical displacement then the rotation of the first node and then the vertical displacement and rotation of the second node so firstly these values are going to be well, the first value is going to be associated with the vertical displacement of node 1 so you can apply with V1 and then the rotation phi1 in V2 phi2 and put that in the color Take green I'm going to copy that and paste the transpose because the magic is symmetrical that will be relevant and I'm going to copy that value and paste the links there or place values, that's always better to place values when you're doing this type of thing just so I don't confuse you and then I need to do the same for element 2 so I'm going to copy that and place that there just in place and for the second element I'm going to change that to 2 and then that's going to be from V2 Phi 2 to V3 Phi 3 because we're looking at different elements. Copy that again and place the transpose of it. And there we have our two element matrices. And now we want to assemble them into a global element or global element matrix. And that is done as follows. You know, type in K. Global equals and that is K global is composed of the combination of this two and or that matrix and this matrix and that is with um, summing them with respect to their corresponding entries. So I always label my unknown displacements first so in this problem I don't know what my both my displacement or vertical displacement and rotation at node 2 is going to be and I also don't know the rotations at node 1 and node 3. So we're going to start with node 2 and we're going to put V2 then phi 2 and then I'm going to put my rotation at 1 and then my rotation at node 3 and all that's left is my V1 and V3. Give that some color again. And copy that. 
So now I want to do a lookup for this. And this lookup, which looks for the corresponding values in these two matrices and adds them together, is done as follows. So equals if error, we do the lookup. You look for that value inside that table. So you only do the expression for the first element, then you do it for the second element. And when you come to the column index number in the VLOOKUP, you start to match. And the lookup value is the top degree of freedom, and the lookup array is the top part of that element array, and the match should be exact. And then my VLOOKUP will also be an exact match. Close my VLOOKUP, and if the value is not found, it will go to the if error statement, and then it should be zero. Okay, so now I have done this for first for my first element. I just need to fix these value by pressing F4 with the dollar signs in. Otherwise, they will move around when I drag my cells to finish the global matrix, and this will cause major errors. You will pick them up also quite quickly. And my blue box will always be in column E, so just put a dollar sign before column E. And my purple box will always be in row 46, so also just put a dollar sign for 46. And that's it for our first element matrix. So then again, for our second one, just there is a plus sign, and copy that entry so you don't have to type everything out again paste it and now the only thing that changes changes is the arrows so i'm gonna delete that one and select second matrix and the same for the top one for the match function select that array and please remember to fix it otherwise you will again have errors when you throw it complete the matrix so that's everything press enter and as a check v2 v2 will be p e6 added with p6 something p plus q equals five that will five something that looks more more or less in the regular box so i'm gonna drag that up drag it down and that's my global element matrix. Also bear in mind, this is also very important, that there is a spring at node 2. Now, you handle the spring by just adding the stiffness to the corresponding entry in your global matrix. So you can see this spring adds stiffness to the, in the vertical direction at node 2. So at node 2, node 2 is vertical displacement degree of freedom in my global matrix I'm going to add that stiffness so in V2 V2 I'm going to add that statement as well as plus 200,000 because it's in three meters I need to add 1000 that will give me that value that is very important otherwise you'll get the wrong answer and that is also how you handle the spring in the problem you also get rotational springs but I'll deal with that maybe later if I am going to do an example on which shows that, but all, the same principle applies to add the stiffness. But usually with rotational springs, you don't set them in finite, finite element packages because they tend to get a bit more tedious to work with. Anyway, let's continue with our problem. So, what we want to do now is we want to assemble our matrix equation. So, firstly, I'm going to type our general. Equation as always, that is our fourth vector is equal to our global matrix multiplied by our displacement vector. And then, well, next, I want to write down our matrix equation, which is that just that general equation in matrix form with actual values in. So, I'm going to start with our stiffness matrix, so that's always a good place to start. So, I'm going to select that. Copy, paste it there, paste the links, that is a good start. 
red. Add some color again. Just like to, to differentiate between values and where my indicators or my indexes are. Put the multiplication sign. Okay. So now I'm going to start at our fourth vector. I'm just going to bring my steps down so I can see what I'm talking about. So my fourth vector has to correspond with the displacement entries here. So that's why I also like to label them so I can see what I'm working with. So my force at vertical 2 is going to be minus 12,000 newtons. It's minus because it's a down force and other positive as upwards. But that is also the sum convention which is used in the derivation of this surface method. Phi 1, there's no applied moment, so I'm going to put a 0. And that's 2 phi 1s. That's not right. That should be a phi 2, shouldn't it? Make it a 2. See some values change. Let's check if that's correct. V2 phi 2. By 1, by 3, 1, 3, that looks right. So let's paste it again. Copy, paste, transpose. See that it's changed and automatically these values also change. And as you can see, these are not now automatically corrected in my magic below, so that's fine. The value is still added there. And also, I've got a little, little sidetrack bit. Please remember just to add the spring stiffness at that node after you've already dragged the entire global matrix. Otherwise, that plus 200,000 will add up everywhere in the matrix and the answer will also be wrong. Just keep that in mind. Okay, continuing the moment at node 1, or the applied moment at node 1 is 0, applied moment at node 3 also 0, and then at node 1, we have the vertical reaction, and node 2, well, we will also have a vertical reaction at 3. So that is our fourth vector, and now moving on to our displacement vector, that's also one reason why I like to label this thing. So just say again, copy, paste the values in if you like, doesn't matter. And you will also see, always see these, where these are values, these will usually be unknown, and these are unknown, and these will have value. But looking at it from a practical perspective, we have the vertical displacement at node 2 is unknown. The rotation at node 2 is also unknown. The rotation at node 1 and 3 also unknown because it's not restrained. And the vertical displacement at node 1 it's going to be zero and the same for node three because it's a pin support and a roller support. Okay, that is our matrix equation. Now to solve that, I'm going to color code our matrix. So this bottom part, I'm going to make that that color. Let's make that pink. Make that lighter green. And make that something like neutral. Okay. This is not necessary to do this, it's just easier to orientate yourself and see what is going on because you should know how this works. But just a quick um, recap is that's going to be one equation, that's also going to be one equation which you're going to solve separately because first you use that equation to solve for the unknowns and then you use. This equation to solve the reaction, and you'll see that in a moment. But you'll also notice these two are always zero, which means in this equation, those values will always be multiplied by zero, so they become irrelevant in the calculation. Also, nice to note that when you're doing this by hand, it's always nice to know that, and you can make your work a bit less. Okay, so now I want to solve my displacement. And do this by again copying those. So V there, equal sign, take it down. And now select the correct size matrix equals matrix multiplication. 
I'm going to multiply the inverse of my green matrix with my known force vector, the known part of my force vector, and then control the enter, that gives me values, and that will be meters and radians is all the way down. Thousand millimeters. Always good to have a reference. And now I want to solve my actions. So I'm copying that value for that section. And this is again the magic multiplication, magic multiplication of that sub matrix, and it must be multiplied by that part of my displacement vector and that is the values I just determined so select that control click enter then I get my vertical reactions which is in newtons because remember my sign convention is newton meters that was good to remember that is going to be equals that divided by a thousand I'm just going to drag it down. And you see they are exactly the same, and it's always a good check is just to check if um, vertical equilibrium is satisfied. And so that's 12 newtons, and add so those gives you 10 point something, and the rest of the force will come from the spring, so that makes sense. So, yeah, that looks like it could be. A the correct answer, which it is. Okay, so now I've solved this problem the long way or using the stiffness method with two elements. In my next video, the link will be in the description showing how to solve this exact problem using the symmetry technique. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video was helpful to you. And I will upload this Excel sheet to Google Doc, Docs file where the link will also be in the description. You can download it and have a look and let me know if you have any questions and also let me know if you think I can make a tutorial or a demonstration or video which may be helpful to you. Thank you very much and like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.